Everyone needs a few tools and a place to work in order to make incense. Whether you live in a studio apartment with very little space or a huge mansion, <laughs> yeah, I wish, uh, everyone needs tools and a place to use them. On this edition of Incense Magic, I'm going to show you the tools you need to start your workshop, the minimum space that you need, and how to make it work in whatever space you have available. If you're a new incense maker, you might be surprised at how little you need to get started. Now, the next video I release will focus on creating a larger, more professional incense making workshop. But in this video, I'm going to focus on small or portable workshops, especially those for newer incense makers. That's on this episode of Incense Magic. Whenever you start a new pastime, it can seem a little intimidating. One of the great things about making incense is that you can start by borrowing almost everything you need from your kitchen. Now, you want to wash everything carefully after you finish making incense, but you might find all of the vital tools are already available to you. Now, the minimum tools you'll need are as follows. First, you're going to need a non-plastic bowl. Uh, in a pinch, you can use a plastic or a styrofoam bowl if there's nothing else available, uh, but these usually have a lot of static electricity, uh, and that can make mixing and measuring a lot more difficult. Uh, they also kind of suck for the environment. Uh, I like to use a white ceramic bowl. Uh, those are easy to clean, and the white interior makes it easy to see your incense mixture while you're working with it. You can also consider buying disposable bowls to keep in your workshop, but if you do, please make sure that they can be composted. Next, you will need a measuring device, or maybe two. Uh, this usually means measuring spoons, but I also like to use a syringe to measure liquids. Uh, it's a more precise way of doing it. And if you're making large amounts of incense, uh, you'll probably need measuring cups in addition to measuring spoons. Uh, and you're also gonna need something to stir with. When I teach workshops or when someone buys one of our incense making kits, we provide wooden craft sticks for mixing and stirring. These work great for small batches, but for larger batches, you can use a small wooden spoon as well. Now, a drying screen or a board really is necessary. Uh, you'll need a place for your incense to rest while it dries. A drying board or a screen is an important tool in a pinch. You can dry your incense using a drying board that's made out of cardboard, uh, but be very careful when removing the incense since it might stick to the paper surface. If you absolutely have to, you can dry incense on a countertop, uh, but you'll need to wash the countertop once the incense has been removed because there will be some residue. Uh, also, be aware, some incense ingredients might stain any surface you use, so choose carefully, probably not your mom's countertop. Now for small workshops, a small screen or a board that will fit into a paper bag is a really good choice. Uh, you can put your screen or your drying board inside a paper bag and your incense can dry without being exposed to drafts or dust. And best of all, if you're drying your incense in a bag and you accidentally knock it over, uh, you won't lose any incense and none of it will fall on the floor and get clumps of hair in it. Now, you're also going to need, obviously, a work surface. Uh, you can make incense in a fairly small space as long as you have room for your bowl and your drying board or your screen, as well as having a small rolling surface. Uh, if you're making cones or coils or shorter jaw sticks, your rolling area could be as small as six inches by six inches. Uh, a larger area makes it a lot easier, but you can get by with an area that's pretty tiny. If you're making longer jaw sticks or masala style incense sticks, you're going to need a larger work area, uh, but something as small as a one foot by two foot is plenty large enough for most home incense making projects. Now those are the only critical items that you're going to need to get started as an incense maker, aside obviously from incense ingredients and a little bit of water. Now that being said, there are some tools that are recommended that you use whenever possible. First would be gloves. While these are optional, I encourage incense makers to wear gloves. Uh, if you use disposable gloves, that's great. 
Uh, they're definitely convenient, but for a more earth-friendly and money-friendly option, uh, you might get a nice pair of dishwashing gloves. Uh, at the end of each incense making session, just leave your gloves on and wash your hands in warm water with mild soap and then take the gloves off. Once they're free of incense dough, uh, dry them with a towel and then let them finish drying in the open air and they'll be ready for the next time you make incense. Just be aware that most of these types of gloves have textured fingertips and those could leave an impression on the surface of your incense, so just be aware of that. Now, a wire whisk is a surprisingly useful tool for incense makers. A whisk is the perfect way to mix your dry ingredients or to break up lumps in a pre-mixed incense blend. Sometimes resins or other powdered ingredients will clump together over time, uh, and a whisk is one tool that will really help to break those lumps apart. Another one is a sifter. A sifter is especially important if you're powdering ingredients yourself or if you buy coarser powders and you want to extract the finer powders out of it. Uh, the sifter and the whisk complement each other really nicely. Uh, a medium mesh screen is good for resins or other sticky materials. A fine mesh is always going to give you the best results for incense making, uh, but if you're dealing with some of those sticky materials, they may clog the screen and it'll take a little bit of extra effort in order to get it clean. Now, a drying box is a really excellent tool for all incense makers. Now, this will help to keep your incense sticks nice and straight while they dry and minimize cracks with cones. Uh, if you use a drying box, just make sure it's large enough that you can put your drying board inside it without touching the sides of the box. Now, for incense makers working with very limited space, the drying box can also double as a place to store the rest of your incense making tools and your supplies when they're not in use. It's very handy to have a plastic box with a tight fitting lid that can hold your entire incense workshop. You can easily pick it up and head over to a friend's house for an afternoon of incense making, uh, or when needed, just slide it under your bed when storage space is at a premium. Finally, there are a group of tools that aren't required, but they will definitely improve your incense making experiences. The first would be a hobby knife or a pizza cutter. And in most situations, a pizza cutter is gonna serve you better than uh, a knife would, since the pizza cutter's blade comes in from above and it isn't dragged through your incense dough, so you're a lot less likely to distort jaw sticks if you cut them to length using a pizza cutter. Uh, and if you use the square cut method, then you'd wanna use a pizza cutter in both directions. A dust mask. Now, some incense ingredients, ingredients can be really unpleasant to breathe in when they're powdered. Uh, if you take a big whiff of cinnamon powder, for example, you really irritate your lungs. So a dust mask can be a very useful tool when working with certain ingredients. Now, an extruder. If you plan to make incense sticks, an extruder is a very valuable addition to your workshop. An extruder is a metal tube that's filled with incense dough and then it's forced out through a specially designed tip. If you want to make jaw sticks or incense coils, an extruder is almost a must. You can roll jaw sticks by hand, but it takes a lot of skill and practice to make them a consistent thickness, and that's a critical part of a jaw stick. Now, you can also use incense molds. Uh, you can use molds that are specifically designed to make incense sticks uh, or cones, but uh, you can also use push molds that are designed for use with clay or other materials. It can really be fun to create some incense in the shape of a crescent moon or a smiling face. Uh, you would need to burn that type of incense on a bed of ash, but it can still be a lot of fun to make. Molds are also the best way to make cones or masala style sticks if you want them to have a consistent size and shape. For masala sticks, the ultimate combination is an extruder to put the incense onto the stick and then a stick mold to firmly connect the incense to the surface of the stick. That'll also make it a consistent thickness from top to bottom. Now, you may also want to have a mortar and pestle. If you plan to powder any ingredients yourself, a mortar and pestle can be a good choice. Uh, they are, you know, uh, quite popular and they've been used since before written history to grind all kinds of materials. So a mortar and pestle would be a really traditional choice. You might consider a small electric coffee grinder, uh, maybe in addition. Although they're not silent, they can be very helpful when you need to powder a small amount of material. Well, that was a nice rundown of the tools you need for a small incense making workshop. 
whether you're a new incense maker or an experienced maker who needs to save on space, I uh, hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to visit my website, theincensedragon.com, for more information and a host of incense making tools and ingredients, including incense molds and extruders. Thank you again for watching. Until next time, bright blessings.